sprawling archipelago of Indonesia is home to the second largest tract of rainforest in the world and is one of the most biologically diverse places on the planet. Its forests are home to rhinos, tigers, leopards and other endangered mammal species. Yet the country is home to over 250 million people. Economic growth has seen infrastructure development skyrocket. Deforestation for commercial timber, palm oil and agricultural plantations is putting huge pressure on the country's national parks and protected areas. The main threat is, is the allocation of land outside of the, the national parks, which is basically annexing large areas of land which has been traditionally used by local people for their livelihoods. So you see people being edged out of their traditional uh, harvesting areas and farming areas into more marginal lands, many of which are occupied by protected areas. People and wildlife that once lived side by side are now competing for land, food and other forest resources. And so there's huge amounts of encroachment of in national parks in Indonesia and CIFOR's own research has shown that actually one quarter of um, the coffee that's grown in Indonesia actually originates from national parks. And so the forests get transformed into farms and other land uses, um, which brings also people into direct contact with elephants in particular, but also big cats and, and other large carnivores. And so the closer that people come to wildlife and wildlife come closer to people, then you have conflict. In Sumatra, this is something that the team from the London Zoological Society are seeing on a regular basis. They have been monitoring tiger populations in Burbank National Park for four years. So it's during one of these occasions that our camera trapping team came across uh, the tiger that had been poached. Originally we thought that the tiger had been a victim of an intense poaching so that means that a snare was set out particularly for tigers and that the tiger had been poached and whilst in situ they took the bits that were actually worth the value so they would have taken the, the pelt, they would have taken the paws and the teeth, most likely the head. However, when we started actually exploring the area, we started seeing that the actual tiger was intact. Bulu, bulu, tu, ya kan? Ini kan, ya. Kulit. Tak, maksudnya tu mungkin belum sempat ditengok sini gitu. Tapi taring, tak ada tu. Oh, ini dia. Nah, taring dapat kan? Berarti ini belum dicek sama si pembuat itu. Look what I found. Tiger canine. That tiger would have been snared, would have been unable to get out, and would have been dying of dehydration and thirst. You would have also seen the scratch marks. It's a horrible way for a tiger to die. These type of incidences, say scientists from the Centre for International Forestry Research, are likely to increase unless national parks can better monitor biodiversity populations. Each of these animals tends to have a really defined territory and so once you've determined that territory you can pretty much manage your national park to avoid those conflict situations. C4 researcher Age Kredalaksana has come to Gunung Halimun Salak National Park. His research, in partnership with Bogor Agricultural University and with support from National Park staff, hopes to gather data on the endangered Javan leopard. The park, situated near the huge city of Jakarta, has some of the last remaining primary rainforest in Java. 
Age and his team hope that the data will be used to reduce conflict between the local people and the wildlife. Of course, uh, if we want to change uh, the management system, I mean the rule of a uh, national park, yeah. so uh, we, we need to you know, have uh, good uh, data, so uh, like uh, biodiversity data, Javan leopard data, uh, and our case space data and community data is very important to, to accomplish uh, our idea. Understanding some of the challenges faced by the national park in protecting leopard populations is vital. Setelah adanya perluasan, kita memang punya tantangan yang sangat besar karena uh, lebih dari 300 kampung ada di dalam dan sekitar kawasan dan di dalamnya terdapat lebih dari 100.000 jiwa. Paling utama yang sangat berpengaruh besar adalah deforestasi karena deforestasi itu mempersempit habitat mereka dengan begitu otomatis mempersempit juga wilayah ruang mereka untuk hidup untuk mencari makan untuk berkembang biak. Age and the team then set up 30 camera traps throughout the forest to monitor the different species. The results were impressive. The camera snapped thousands of images of deer, civet, birds, and most important to Aggie and the team, up to three individual leopards. After uh, I set up the camera and I checked the result, yeah, and I, I saw uh, the, the leopard picture, yeah. yeah, I was very, very happy, yeah, very happy. Yet leopards have a large territory of around 10 kilometers squared. So up to three leopards in one small area could present problems in the future. Because of the leopard is top predator, top predator is in a you know food chain, food chain uh, system yeah, mechanism. Yeah, I think uh, it's too much. Yeah, if we compare with the the prey, yeah, like deer, like mouse, like uh, civet, yeah, we as assume that the condition of the ecosystem uh, is not balanced. Yeah. so the leopard tend to find another place to find the meal or the food, yeah. Communities around Gunung Halimun Salak National Park have already noticed more leopards in the area. Pernah uh, ada macam tutul ya masuk kampung mengambil itu kambing ya kambing masyarakat di sini. Sebabnya macam tutul datang ke kampung itu mungkin kurang makanan di hutan ya. Saya nggak mau atau misalnya ada masyarakat memburu satwa-satwa yang ada di hutan ya mungkin dampaknya itu masuk ke kampung ya terpaksa mungkin walaupun gimana itu macan tutul makan punya masyarakat di sini Trying to find ways to protect the leopards while meeting the needs of local communities will always be a challenge Age hopes that this research will help the national park be more effective in reducing human wildlife conflict something that the national park is already taking steps to achieve kita membentuk yang namanya model kampung konservasi di mana e, di model kampung konservasi tersebut masyarakat bekerja bersama-sama dengan taman nasional untuk menjaga kawasannya. Kita berusaha juga untuk mencoba memperbaiki e, taraf perakonan mereka sehingga mereka mempunyai pilihan, pilihan dalam mm, mata pencarian mereka sehingga ketergantungan terhadap sumber daya alam di dalam kawasan hutan itu sedikit demi sedikit akan terkurangi. Habitat, selama habitat mereka bagus, saya pikir tidak akan ada konflik yang terjadi antara satwa liar dengan masyarakat sekitar. Despite government efforts to reduce deforestation, much more research and resources will be needed to ensure that Indonesia's national parks are protected in the future. It's all very well having these, these parks on paper, but in, in practice it's very difficult to, to have the funds to enforce the regulations which control access and, um, and protect the biodiversity within the parks themselves. But here we are, the most densely populated area on Earth, and we have a city of 20 million people, only 60 to 80 kilometers away. 
and there are still leopards up in the mountains. So there's something, some, some hope to be had there. And, and I think something has worked and we need to find out what it is so that we can apply it elsewhere.